Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. Today is a special episode for a special group of people. We're actually uh, doing this episode today for the subreddit wine group. Everyone's heard of Reddit, but they have a subgroup called uh, that's dedicated just to wine, wine talking. And we have an account on it, and our account is The Blue Roster, but we have two people writing on it. Not myself, but... My partner, why don't you come over here, baby? <laughs> I'm was... here just for the wine. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's here for just... Hi! For... So, this is for the subreddit community. However, everybody will uh, learn something and benefit from this episode. So, do you want to talk a little bit about what the challenge is for today? So, every month, um, the, the rated, subreddit account... Um, the community would have a theme for everyone to participate in. So last month it was Malbec from Argentina and all the members who are interested in the topic would come together and bring one one kind of wine and they would write a review about it. And this month the challenge is to find a wine that's under US $5. Yeah. Of course the point of it all is not to find cheap wine but cheap wine that actually delivers good value for money. And we're cheating actually because uh, <laughs> we're, it, it didn't say $5 where, like if you're in whatever market. So uh, we are going to go ahead today and we have this wine. We are currently in Sarajevo right now. Sarajevo in Bosnia-Herzegovina. We are about to, we just finished through, uh, going through Serbia, um, Serbia, a little bit of northern Croatia, Macedonia, we're going to go through Herzegovina, Montenegro, Dalmatia, and Croatia, and Istria to taste the wines. So we have with us today, this wine we had tried before because it's a house wine, very inexpensive. This is the Vinaria Chitluk Hersigo Blatina from 2012. Now, this wine right here, we got one liter of wine in the supermarket, $3.30 US. So do you think that qualifies for the challenge? Of course. So I have tasted this wine before. I like it. Shireen does not like it as much as me. Just to give you a little history, Blatina is a grape uh, south of Mostar here in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina. I don't know a ton about it. There's not a lot written on it. There's not a lot of information on it. All I do know, it's a, it's only grown in Herzegov Bosnia-Herzegovina. For me, uh, when it's not too manipulated, I've only had about four or five Blatinas, which I really enjoy. It reminds me a lot, a lot of a very basic Sangiovese. I'm talking about Emilia Romagna, or I'm talking about Tuscan house wines. That's what it reminds me of. I love the sour cherry, has nice acidity, and not a lot of tannin. So you ready to drink the wine? I've always been ready. <laughs> we don't need this bad boy because it's a screw top. And let's get started here. So, here we go. First of all, Blatna has, what, what would you describe the color as? Ruby red. Yeah, ru re really ruby red, almost fiery color. Very high clarity it, as well for a red wine. It does remind me a lot of an unmanipulated Sangiovese or even like a, even an Etna Rosa. It's kind of got the fiery quality. All right, let's give this a sniffy sniff. I stole that from Gary Vanderchuk. I don't know why I just said that. It smells a lot better than the other. Bottle. I really like yeah. this. Shireen has not been a fan of this. Because it smells raw. There is a little bit, oh, as I spilled a little, it's a lot better. there's a little bit of homemade winey taste, a homemade rawness in it, like uh, like natural wine, but not too much. Once you swirl it, that goes away. I'm picking up a ton of sour cherry yeah. and a little bit more vanilla in this bottle, right? Sour cherry, Just vanilla. Yeah, yeah. Sour cherry, vanilla, a little cola. Anything else for you? It still smells a little bit like homemade. A little wine. raw, so. Oh, and it's got the little, f you know why I like this? It's got the little faint of rubberness. Just, I get the little faint of rubberness that I've come to come to like from a lot of great wines, especially Rioja. Let's give this a taste. This tastes a lot better than the, the other two bottles that we had. Ooh. The nose reminds me so much of a central Italian house wine. 
Um, so I love this wine because I love sour cherries. This is Sour Cherry City. Uh, nice acidity, basically no tannins, right? A little bit. A very, little. very little. Yeah. I get sour cherry, soil, maybe like a smudge of vanilla, but it's mostly sour cherry juice to me. What's that, mm. What else you pick up? I like the acidity that goes, that means that it's a good house wine to go with food. But I, I won't drink it on its own. That said, it's it's a it's a good, it's a brilliant crowd pleaser. It's a well made wine. It doesn't have a super long end palate, but there are no hollow spots. There's no oh. hollow points in the mid palate, yeah. front palate. Uh, a very fruit forward wine, but still a little old world style, right? It's not a mm -hmm. new world style. I swear, when I exactly. first when I first got this wine, it's it's like the first time I went to Central Italy and had house wine. That's exactly what it reminded me of, the nose and everything. Like, just a nice, nice tanginess to it. I would get a lot of this as well in the States. I would, to, that for, like, dinner, like, just a nice simple table wine. <laughs> you wouldn't throw... See, on my... I like the taste. I like the taste. My Vivino account, I rated it, this is 3.7 out of 5. And for the members of the subreddit, uh, for my Vivino scale... Anything over 3.5, uh, I find to be above average. And then when we start getting a 3.7, 3.8 eight range, I really like it. 4, excellent. 4.1, 4.2, very excellent. 4.5, like, awesome. For me, that's my skill. I give this a 3.7 for $3.30. I don't think it can go wrong. I give it a 3. Wow. But, but that, that said, it's, it's, it's a good wine, good for dinner, good for lunch, good with food. Um... I won't drink it on its own, but but again, the challenge is finding finding a, a wine under five dollar, and I think this still goes with the theme because it's really value for money. I will still drink it. Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is, us traveling together for wine. We've been traveling <laughs> together for uh, wine the last year, so for the subreddit community, uh, we we started out in Valais, Switzerland. We went to Tuscany. We went to Piedmont Barolo Barbaresco. We went to Mount Etna, uh, the Douro wine region in Portugal. Um, Galatheus in Spain, Bierzo, Ribera, Ribera Sacra, um, Rioja, then we went to Turkey, then we went to Georgia, Chacheti, Imereti in Georgia, we went to Armenia, Areni, awesome, uh, we took a little break for a while, and now we just got done going through Serbia, Macedonia, and Northern Croatia, coastal Croatia, so we still have a lot more to cover, uh, I'm excited, the funny thing is us traveling together, we don't always have the same taste in wine. Almost 90% of the time, we don't agree. <laughs> but that's a pleasure of it, so we challenge each other. All I'd the rather time. fight over wine than... Uh, than fight over anything else. Anything else. <laughs> so um, so that, that's it for the Reddit community. Uh, I recommend... So for for me, for not only the Reddit community, everybody out there, when we go to Herzegovina in a few days, I'm stocking up on Blantna because I've tasted some excellent examples yeah. Uh, really reminds me of a like I said a unique Sangiovese. Uh, really nice prices. So I'm gonna get some to take back to the states and throw in my cellar. If you like this video, oh my God. please subscribe. Oh, bye. Take care of the video. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Uh, sub if you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel, and I will see you at the next episode.